All right, y'all. Here is the veteran course for the Undernight in birth XC late clear. Um, this has a little bit of extra information on just about every aspect of the game. Um, I don't know, I won't go over the specifics just yet. We'll just jump right into the first lesson. So this one is bash blocking. Um, in the last video I'd referenced, and I think a very similar lesson was in the beginning of the last video. Um, and I said that it was very useful, but I was lying. It's not useful. This is the one that's useful. And you're about to see why. There, I'm already uh, screwing up, so just give me a moment here. Get a good uh, position. Okay. Instantly failed. So what I'm trying to do here is buffer a dash while I'm blocking. So let me um display input history here. So I'm trying to buffer a dash. As you can see, I'm pressing the button before I exit block stun. But if I do it too early, then I screw up. And if I do anything other than dash, it counts as a failure because um, basically had I actually done that move, then I would have gotten hit, I think. So yeah, uh, you just button dash and you immediately resume your block. And that way when you're in a situation against a character that just has a relentless um, range of offense, you can kind of get in safely. Um, now here it's talking about passing link or gatlings with smart steer or auto combos. Um, and I, I mentioned this before, how you can do BCAA. So, yeah, this is something that you'll see in combos sometimes. You can kind of overcome that combo limitation by using auto combos, or at least chunks of them. Um, recovering, recovery scaling, this is also called uh, hit stun decay. So, Basically, when you're uh, doing a combo, let's say the first move you hit with, um, oh, this is a, a difficult one to kind of demonstrate on because of that UI there. Um, hmm. There's no way to, for, for me to like hide the, the UI, but... Maybe if I can just pick another lesson. So this is 518. I'm going to pick a different challenge uh, just to show what I mean. Let's go with um, yeah, something like this. Ah, this is still covering up the UI. Um, hmm. Be this one. All right, there we go. You can see it. So, what I wanted to show before was, um, whoops, was how the farther you go into a combo, the um, less hit stun your attacks do. Like there's a there's hit stun decay or a penalty on the amount of frame advantage that you have. 
So if you look in the upper left corner where it says one hit every time I land a hit, you'll notice that there's a bar underneath the, the text there, right above the damage. And it kind of starts off fully white and full. And then um, it kind of depletes towards the middle from the sides where the, the, the white bar runs out and you just see the, the empty blue bar filling it up. Um, that bar is essentially tracking the amount of hit stun that the attack has. So when I do 5A, the bar is uh, smaller and it fills, like it empties a lot faster. If I do 5B, it stays full for a little bit longer and takes a little bit longer before it's emptied. If I do 5C, it's even long, um, the bar is even bigger and it seems to take a little bit longer before it starts to empty. Um, so how can I show this? Um, let's see. So if you look at how long it takes that bar to empty and then compare it to the end of the string that I'm about to do, you'll notice the difference. It's a very small difference, actually. Let me see what else I can do here. I don't know if you noticed it then. Let me try it again. So... If I do 5B raw, you'll notice that that bar stays there full for a little while before it starts to empty. But if I do the 5B that you get from the second hit of the smart steer combo, you'll notice that it ends a lot sooner at the end of the string. So I'll do it again, 5C, 5B, then I'll do 5AA. Um, but when I do that, it'll uh, complete this. So just, you wanna, compare how long it takes that bar to empty from a 5B. So, see how it's it's it stays full for a much shorter amount of time. So, um, essentially I went through all that to just kind of demonstrate what the game's talking about in 5.17, recovery scaling. Um, essentially, uh, there's just that penalty to all of your subsequent attacks as a combo goes on. Um, but certain attacks will put the opponent in a knockdown state, which is like a fixed period of hit stun, usually while they're flying through the air or they're being wall bounced or something. Um, so a, in a lot of games, you'll notice that the longest combo take advantage of special damage states like um, soft knockdown or hard knockdown so that you can extend the combo a lot longer than you normally would. So you do like a, a short string and then uh, go into, I don't know, some some sort of slow, but will still work in a combo special attack that puts the opponent in a, a special state. So if you decide that you wanna create your own combos, maybe after learning some um, B&Bs from a wiki or from the mission mode in this game, then that's one way that you can kind of lean on to make your combos a little bit more uh, efficient when you land a hit. Um, now the second slide is saying that the hit stun scaling or hit stun deterioration is um, it's worse if you start with either an assault jump attack or, or an assault aerial or with a light attack with a, a, the A button. So. And it's also reminding you that on counter hit, um, hit stun lasts a few frames longer than it normally would. So you you might be able to combo um, one move into a much slower move than you, you're used to doing. So maybe 5C into like some strong special where you would have normally had to press a faster button in order to combo in time. Um, so yeah, it's it's useful information. I just wish the game kind of harped on it a little bit more because especially in the veteran course, 
you kind of don't want to have a surface understanding of these things. And they'll sometimes just have a, a lesson that might be a pain in the ass to get through the first time that you could actually pa uh, pass and not really understand what it is that you're doing. So I don't know, this, this tutorial is good, but I think it's, um, it might be that the people translating it didn't really have a background in fighting games. So like they use the wrong words for things, even though they might've been like technically correct translations. It's just not the lingo that uh, fighting game players normally use. Um, using the same moves twice. Yeah, there is a um, diminishing returns uh, aspect to combos in this game. Let's see if I can do this. All right, let me see how the computer does it. All right. I'm just doing it a little too late. So yeah, you do the same move twice. They'll just um, automatically recover out of the second loop of that move. Um, that's one of the things that they did to prevent uh, prevent infinite combos because I don't know if you might have uh, heard of the original game Under Night in Birth without any extra subtitles but that game was really bad because you could essentially land a hit and then do a couple of attacks into one of those special state moves that I mentioned earlier and that special state didn't have any sort of hit stun deterioration associated with it so you essentially always had time to uh, just do a couple of attacks into that special, a couple more attacks into that special and just kind of loop it until your opponent dies or time runs out and you have a life lead. And that's like the entire round. It was really bad. Um, so I'm glad they, they added these different like mechanics to kind of defeat infinites. So uh, delay cancel. They're just kind of explaining something in depth that you would normally notice in um, some instructions in mission mode. They would just say delay an attack and you might wonder what that is. And then you watch the demo. You see that essentially it means that instead of doing like, you know, ABC, you might do ABC like a little bit slower. Um, and in doing that after a juggle, You'll notice that it varies um, the point where your opponent is at when they pop up in the air, maybe so that you can they're close enough to the ground for you to be able to combo them after you land, rather than hitting while they're uh, hitting them while they're up in the air, and then they would pop up and you wouldn't be able to reach them with a, a grounded attack. Um, so let's see, two C and then increase five C. Right, you have to delay that. Um, so I'll, I'll do it without delaying so you can see why it doesn't work. So if I do it like that, then I'm too high up in the air when he lands. And so he recovers before I can OTG with this 3B. And uh, I don't think I've explained OTG. So when you hit a, a character that's on the ground, um, after they hit the ground, and they're essentially not able to, to do anything about getting hit. That's what's called a, an OTG. So let's see. Uh, I did that too soon. I had to delay both of them. I, did, I delayed that too much. Might need to mash out the 3B. There we go. Normally, you would like maybe mash it out to get an idea of what the timing is like, but then, you know, over time, just practice it so that you're not mashing. Um, yeah. Definitely try to avoid mashing in this game. Except, you're, except when you're trying to do something like a reversal.
So yeah, this uh, fuzzy guard, it's talking about uh, what I mentioned in the last video about blocking overheads, even though, well, you'll, you'll see how effective it is. So, um, I'm not sure how obvious that was, but essentially, you just kind of react to something that looks like it might be um, an overhead. With Nanase, you know, it's kind of her whole gimmick, so it can, it, yeah, it can be difficult to defend against. But yeah, what I'm doing here, I'm just reacting to what I'm seeing. If she does a hop, then I immediately start blocking high. Um, but another part of it is when you get kind of used to the, the timing of those attacks, you'll notice that the low follow-up actually comes out a little bit sooner than the overhead. So you can kind of always block high. But you still have to kind of learn the timing. I'm also noticing that the uh, audio, yeah, the, the audio cue actually kind of helps too. But she kind of seems to say the same thing every time she goes for the, the overhead. And I can actually react to the beginning of it. Alright, so I'm going to close my eyes and see if I can block it that way. Then, then I'll know. Alright, <laughs> it took too long. <laughs> yeah, it's it's unreliable, but I don't know. Yeah, it's it's difficult to react to the, the audio, but if you if you practice Yeah, I think I did it with the exact same timing each time there, and it still worked. So essentially, you want to block low and um, sort of feel out what the timing would be to block the overhead if that was the next attack. Um, so it's kind of like throw teching, but for an overhead, like your your option selecting. Uh, between blocking low and blocking high by doing an input that sort of protects against both uh, options. Um, so an option select, which I, I don't think I've uh, seen in the, the game yet. I think it's in one of the later uh, lessons. But in fighting games, an option select is when you just kind of do one thing and you just cover multiple things. So um, I'm not sure if I went over that when the game had the lesson about the um, delayed throw tech earlier on in the last video, but yeah, that's definitely a, a thing in fighting games. So, for example, in um, in this game, uh, well, I, I you, you already saw the delayed tech stuff, so I won't go into it again. But that's probably the simplest example of a, a throw tech or a, an option select. Um, later on in this video, there's going to be some more stuff on option selects. Now, I'll, I'll point them out as they come up. And I think they're all in, like, a section. There's, like, three of them back to back to back. Fuzzy counter. Um... I'm not sure of that terminology, but I don't know what the name would be for that. So I guess fuzzy counter works. So yeah, this fuzzy counter, I, I guess to go over a fuzzy input, it's when you sort of and you kind of know the timing for um, the next possible set of things that your opponent might do. 
and then you, you do an input that kind of covers all of them. So you'll see here it says if the opponent jumps, do a standing guard, then just as the opponent is about to land, do 5A. So essentially, if they do a jump in, you would block it. If they do an empty jump low, then you would start attacking um, before they're done landing. So because an aerial has uh, startup frames, if it's still in those startup frames when you land, then you just have your landing recovery frames and your attack doesn't come out. So if you either, if you wait until your opponent is low enough and you're just blocking high while they're jumping at you, then at a certain point, if you do say a 5A or a similarly fast attack, then you're essentially meeting them, going back to the lesson on Okizame from uh, the last video. Um, you're essentially putting them in a position where they have no choice but to block against the next thing you do or just get hit if they're in um, recovery frames from landing from the jump. So yeah, the opponent will do a jump attack mixed with an empty jump low. So essentially, if you do your inputs correctly, then no matter what the opponent does in this situation, you'll either block their jump in or punish their empty jump low. So there I uh, press the button too late. Um, I pressed it too early and got a trade instead of blocking. It's okay to press the button while you're in block stun. But you also have to press it before um, they land and hit you, so it's a narrow window. Like there was a trade because I took too long to press the button. And again, I, I just took way too long, so I got hit. Yeah, this is tough. So now I'm trying to get an idea of when I'm pressing the button, I'm trying to press it a little bit earlier each time. So yeah, I started getting used to pressing the button when he was at roughly her face at his waist. Once he got to that point, then I knew if I pressed the button because he starts to fall a little bit faster. Um, that by the time he fell, he would just start getting hit and he wouldn't be able to do anything. So... Um, yeah, fuzzy counters, that's something that you're going to want to know. But generally speaking, you're going to want to prefer doing an anti-air to a fuzzy counter. And that situation, I think, is one you'd only be on um, on wake up. In general. Like, it would be either on wake up or sometimes in neutral, but I don't know. <laughs> You'll just have to play and, and see what I mean. Um, this is saying that the uh, throw tech window is a little bit longer than it takes to actually finish getting grabbed. So you can kind of react to the throw even though you're, you're mostly going to want to anticipate it and do a delay tech. But it's also saying to be careful of that and not to attempt to tech the throw too early and get frame trapped.
Say when the opponent comes close, tech the opponent a bit after you go into a crouching guard position. This should allow you to guard against both normal attacks and throws. This is essentially saying um, that you can... Yeah. Didn't actually throw though. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You just do a, a throw tech input after enough time would have passed for them to have hit you with an attack or uh, done an attack that you would have blocked or to start a throw. And this is um, mentioning that when someone does a, a gold grab, essentially does a, a throw or attack throw, um, or not attack throw, a special throw, um, while you're in block stun, you have uh, an even wider window than normal to attack the throw. So yeah, the gold effect will help mark the proper timing. So yeah, you can just kind of react to that gold effect there and you, you get it 100% of the time. So this is what I was saying before about not having to worry too much about um, getting thrown in a situation like that because you just have so much time to, to tech. Um, so yeah, that's a good lesson for kind of getting used to that throw tech timing uh, for gold throws. No teching, yeah. Um, I think this is also called what throw throw escape miss or something. Let me actually, this up. There's a specific term for this. What is it? I don't know. It's like it's like throw throw escape miss or or something like that. Um, but yeah, essentially, if you miss time a throw and you do it too early, um, it won't work. So yeah, that's saying that if you attempt to tech a throw too early, then you uh, there's a brief window where you can't tech the throw, so you just automatically get grabbed if they try to. Now this is a, a really good option select. This one that you want to do on wake up. Yeah, hold um, guard and A and then time D to do attack against throws. Um, it's opponent who will dash in and mix a throw with their attack. So yeah, essentially the, the two options are they dash in and try to throw you, and then you hit them with 2A. Um, or they dash in and try to attack you, and you block the attack. Or... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Either you tech their throw, you block their attack, or you hit them, just like it says. <laughs> I did it wrong. I missed the tech input. So yeah, the, the trick with this is you do, um, you just sit on down back, 
But as soon as they get close, you, you do, um, with a very slight delay, 2A, and then you press D while you're still holding A. So you essentially have three inputs. You, do, you have your down block, you have your uh, 2A, then you have your throw tech. Um, because you're doing the, the throw tech la a little bit late, there's time for the, the throw to actually come out so you can tech it. Um, and you're not committing to anything. So yeah, if you if you time it right, then um, you should get a throw tech if that if the throw comes out. But I'm taking too long to press um, D, so it doesn't come out as a, a simultaneous input. Um, earlier, I um, well, not earlier in the last video, there was a, a part about doing Kara throws from dash to get extra um, range out of it. This is essentially the same thing. Um, well, it's not quite the same thing, but you're canceling out of the startup of um, of the 2A to... Well, no, you're not canceling out of the startup. Um, how do I put this? When you do two button inputs, one right after the other, um, if they're within a window of a few frames, the game will count that input as a simultaneous button press rather than just, you know, a sequential button press. So if you're in block stun while the input buffer is running, then you'll essentially, it'll prioritize the simultaneous button press over the single button press. So it'll prioritize a plus D, your throw tech, over the 2A. Um, so if you're not in block stun, you'll get the 2A, but if you are, then you get 2AD. Um, and if you're, if you got grabbed maybe during your 2A, then after that point, you'll input your throw tech. So that's how the, the option select works. Now, this is an anti-air option select. So this is saying, um, yeah, 2A isn't gonna work on assaults because they have low crush, meaning low attacks just don't really work on them. So you want to option select with an anti-air, in this case, hides 3C instead. Um, and this is saying you want to go back to your crouching guard to make those the, the options. So um, here your opponent runs up and will either they'll dash and do a throw, will dash and do 2A or dash and assault. So you want to sit on down back because that's your, your default guarding uh, motion, your default stance, I should say, since low attacks can be pretty quick compared to overheads, which are reactable, um, for the most part. Um, so as soon as they get in throw range, you do 3 plus A plus C plus D. So because the 3C is a higher priority than 2A, then if you do them both on the same frame, you get 3C. Um, if you get thrown, you'll tech the throw. Um, if they attack, then you're only inputting this for one frame if you can get away with it. So you should block their attack. Um, otherwise, if they assault, then because your 3C is the highest priority move in um, a neutral situation, when you're not in any form of stun, then you get your anti-air. So, ah, I forgot to press D. There we go. Oops. Oh, 
Let me restart this. I think I did my throw check too early. Yeah, that time I, I, I'm getting, um, I'm doing slow inputs basically. So this is one of those things where it might be useful to um, start finding macros. So here there's no a plus C plus D. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll, whoa, whoops. What is this? I don't want to do that. Um, so there's no, there's no simple way to do it. You just have to get used to pressing these buttons in the same frame. really weird that I'm getting a throw. Oh, it's because I'm not doing them all in the same frame, maybe? Getting uh, down by accident. I keep not getting a uh, free seat here. Yeah, the timing for this is, is uh, it's tight. I'm trying to do 3C, but... I'm getting a 236C when I just want 3C. There's 3C. So yeah, um, with that, it's pretty much a matter of sitting on down back and then pressing whatever your anti-air option select would be. Um, for hide, it would be uh, 3 plus A plus C plus D, so you press those all on the same frame. Um, and if you don't get it quite right, then you screw up the, um, the input priority and then you'll sometimes get, you know, a throw instead of your 3C or, or something like that. So you gotta be careful. Just gotta really grind that out.
You can see, I, I didn't get it on my first try, so... Just keep at it. Definitely don't try to, um... So, to, to practice that with your own character, if you're not using hide, you're gonna wanna set up a dummy that, um... Similarly dashes at you and then does certain things, um... Randomly. So I would say to set up the restart position to be in the center and then record your dummy jumping and then doing a dash um, and then picking one of those three options and just set three different recording slots with each option and then you can just restart and you know react to what they do well not not react but practice the timing of your option select And even better, um, when you notice yourself getting hit by these um, mix-ups on your opponent's approach, you can kind of watch the replay and note what they're doing, and then record the dummy doing those things so that you can kind of learn that matchup a lot quicker than you normally would. This is another uh, option select. Um, so you sit on your uh, down back, your crouching guard, or your, your one input. And when they dash up to you, you want to um, do a delayed stand block plus dash, a delayed back command back dash, and then keep holding the A button and then press D. Um, so if you get those three, well, I should say those two inputs down correctly, um, if they try to throw you, you'll tech the throw. If they try to attack you, you'll guard the attack. And if they try to assault you, you'll dash. So essentially, um, it's the same option select as the last one, except instead of trying to anti-air their assault, you're uh, trying to backdash away from it, so you can just whiff punish it. Um, hmm. How do I put this? You would still get some invulnerability time um, while backdashing, but I'm not sure how that would stack up against an assault. So, which one of these option selects you pick kind of is going to depend on your positioning, how good your character's backdash is, and just, you know, you, you just kind of try it and see how it goes. So yeah, um, when I was getting thrown, um, it was because I was taking too long to uh, press D. So that's why this is really good for at least getting the timing down of the inputs. But um, well, I guess a, a tech and a backdash option select would kind of uh, it would be a universal timing. So this actually is a really useful um, tutorial mission to use for practicing that. Um, but for the anti-air one, you're definitely going to want to train um, a little uh, dummy to do that. Just set up some recording um, slots. <laughs> 